Welcome on into today's comprehensive video where we're going to touch on a lot of different things you can do to try to get your Roku player working properly. I've got a lot of questions on my videos over the years of people that run into issues. I'm going to try to touch on as many of those things as possible so we can get your player up and running. Some of these might be very self-evident to those that are watching this video. Just make sure you know that everyone's at a different level of tech understanding. So just keep that in mind. Something that might be self-evident to you might not be to everyone else. So the first things we're going to want to do here is just make sure that you're getting to the home screen. Some people, they get stuck to the point where they can't get the Roku player to show the home screen up on their television and they have no signal. So you're going to make sure that both your HDMI and power cord are working properly. So when you plug in your power cord, make sure it's plugged into the wall. And then once you plug it into the back of your player, it should have that power indicator light come on. That means you're getting good power from the wall. If you're not getting that, either the power cord itself is faulty or the outlet that you're plugged into isn't working. So try different outlets. If you're still not able to get the power light to come on, then it's probably an issue with the cord itself. The next thing is making sure you're plugged into one of the HDMI ports on the back of your TV. And for this example, I'm plugged into HDMI one and make sure you're on the proper input. So on your TV remote, you should be able to find a button that either says source like mine does, or it might say input. It might say HDMI. It could say a number of different things, but once you find that particular button, you click it and then it'll show you all the different input sources on your TV. You can see that we're currently on HDMI one. So we're all ready to go. Now we just need to plug in to the back of our Roku player. Once we plug that into the back of our Roku player, you can see we're now on the home screen. Everything's working properly. If you do this step and you're not able to get this screen to show up, then either your HDMI cord itself is faulty, which I've actually seen with a family member. We switched out the HDMI cord and everything started working again, or the input on your TV isn't working. So I'm in HDMI one. If I still wasn't getting to this page, I would try HDMI two and I would also try HDMI three. If those weren't working, then I'd be pretty confident that it's probably a faulty HDMI cord. So now we're gonna to touch on some issues that you might run into within the Roku player itself. So the most common issues I come across that can be fixed are either a faulty internet connection or just restarting and rebooting the system because it's frozen or glitched for some reason. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at the Wi-Fi signal that we're getting to our Roku player. And if you're not in the good to excellent range on your internet connection, then you might have issues with getting a proper loading video on your screen to consistently play. So going down to our internet connection, we're gonna hit the settings, network, and then about. And as you can see here, once you go to the about area, you should be able to see what type of signal strength you have. Mine's currently at excellent. If you're not in that good to excellent range, be sure to get your Roku player in an area where it's not surrounded by different things or walls or just covered up in getting a good, clear, powerful Wi-Fi signal from your router. So now we're gonna go back to the home page. Now that we're back on the home page, the next thing you can try is restarting your system if just making sure that you're getting a good internet signal isn't what fixes your problem. So again, go down to settings, go down to system, and then click system restart. That'll just reboot the system. And once you get back to the home page after doing the system restart, if that doesn't fix your problem, the next thing I recommend trying is doing a system update, which is just one spot above the system restart. Maybe you're trying to use an application that needs to be updated to function properly and it just hasn't updated yet. So once you click that system update, it's gonna to check to make sure that all the applications that you have are currently up to date and ready to use. If that doesn't work, the next thing I recommend is to uninstall the application itself and then reinstall it. And you can do that. We'll just show you an example here with YouTube. On your Roku remote, touch the little asterisk button whenever you're hovered over the YouTube app and then click remove channel and then click remove again. And this is going to delete in this particular example, YouTube off of my player and to download it again, we're gonna go down to the streaming channels and then we're gonna click the search channels. And as you can see, I've already searched for it. So I'm just going to go there and then click add channel. 
and then it's going to reinstall YouTube onto my Roku player. Sometimes you just need to do a complete refresh of the application itself by uninstalling it and then reinstalling it. This probably isn't going to help every case, but it will help some of your cases. Now, if that doesn't work, the last recommendation I can give you is to go on Twitter search on your computer and just type in something like, for this example, YouTube app not working. And then it's gonna show you other people that have tweeted that they're having issues with the YouTube app. Likely, if you're having a problem with an application, other people are also having a similar issue. And also, YouTube support might tweet out something like, we know of this issue, we're trying to fix it. So Twitter search is just a great way to see what other issues people are running into. If no one else is having the same problem, that you're having, then it's probably not a widespread problem. And it's just something that one of our previous steps that we've run through thus far in this video is probably going to be able to fix. So that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video, guys. We've touched on things from just getting the Roku player up and running to how to get it working once you're in the Roku player itself, or if an individual app isn't working, things that you can try to get that app up and running. So I hope that this video helped you guys out there in getting your Roku player running properly. If I didn't touch on something that you have a question with, you can throw that down in the comment section. I'll do my best to try to answer it. Thanks for stopping on in, and we hope to see you guys in future videos, and subscribe for more Roku content. Bye.